Hi there. Welcome back to Movie Review Mom. I'm the mom and I have a very special guest joining me today to do a movie review. My guest is known as High Heel Knight and he does movie reviews and he started off actually as a subscriber and then we've been just chatting for I don't know, like a year or so or something. Anyway, he reached out and he said, hey, let's do a movie review together of Clifford. So welcome, welcome. <laughs> yes, I go by many names. I go by Lance. I go by Knight. I go by H.A. Thing. I go by High Hill Knight. That's my social media. But call me whatever you like. Just don't call me late for dinner, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And by the way, subscribe of course subscribe to movie review mom but definitely check out his movie reviews too all right so as i said we're going to be talking about clifford the big red dog and so lance give us a big summary what's this movie all about besides a big red dog right, well it's based on the long-running classic young children's property clifford the big red dog in this case we have Emily Elizabeth in New York. She is with her mom. Uh, mom's a single parent. Sometimes in other media, they have both parents or even a whole family. But now it's just Emily and her mom. And Emily's having a rough time at school. She gets sort of bullied. She feels, uh, you know, sort of alone. And her mother's just doing her best to keep a roof over their head. Well, one day, uh, she goes to the park with her eccentric uncle and encounters a very mysterious pet giveaway service. He meets uh, Clifford there, little puppy, red, so cute and adorable. And she takes her home. But when uh, she gets home, she loves him so much that he wakes up and poof, he's a giant puppy. And now <laughs> Emily Elizabeth has to figure out how she's going to take care of this puppy, especially since one, pets aren't allowed in her apartment complex. And two, there's this organization that is trying to capture Clifford so they can study his genetics. That way they can also figure out how to grow things super, super big. That was a very good synopsis. I love that. Um, and by the way, in case you're watching this review, uh, you don't have to have seen any of the other Big Red, Clifford Big Red Dog movies, TV series, read the books or any of that. It's, it can be enjoyable as a standalone film, wouldn't you say? Yes, and you don't have to go to the movie theater to go see this movie. This movie is also available on Paramount Plus at no additional cost. So I, I went to go see the movie in the theater. In fact, if you see that poster back there, that's where I got the poster. And then the next day, I watched it at home with, uh, well, myself. But <laughs> if you want to watch it with your family, you want to watch it yourself, it's right there available at home. So you got the theater at home, or in my case, both. <laughs> I love having lots of options still worried about COVID. It's still surging. So I love that so many films are going to streaming and other video on demand services like a Paramount Plus. So yay. All right. So you know how I do movie reviews. We dive into the things we like and the things we don't like. So I want to hear your list. Yeah. Dive away. So what were the things that you really liked about the movie? Well, I love Clifford overall. My father read Clifford books to myself and my siblings when we were young. And I watched the cartoon series that was on PBS. And as you can see, I got the big dog. That was a gift from my mom from several years ago. Aww. So just seeing this live action version was something that I was going to just initially enjoy. I tried to normally come with out bias, but if you love a property, you, you can't help but, you know, have to enjoy it. So it's more of a case of, do they not ruin my joy? And they don't ruin my joy. And personally, my favorite part is the chase sequence towards the end of the film where Clifford is running from the evil facility to New York. And it takes place, and a part of it takes place in downtown Newark, which is near where I live. So near, I have no idea when they filmed it. I saw wow. it. Like, what is this? <laughs> so yeah, get, a lot of places say, oh, we're in Newark, but they're actually in Toronto. No, they were somehow in Newark, and I had no idea that this movie was made. So yeah, that was my big takeaway. <laughs> it's like, oh my goodness, it's actually that, Newark. <laughs> that would have been amazing, you of all people. You could have been in the movie as one of those extras. Have you ever been an extra in a movie? 
Yes, many, many years ago, I was in an extra in an Andy Garcia movie uh, that barely made any money so much that I don't even remember the name of the movie. <laughs> Aww. I was actually paid to be an extra quite a bit of money, and I was so excited. And then the project just never made it out the door. It was going to be like an American telenovela called Saints and Sinners. <laughs> anyway it never even aired but they still uh, paid me and it was super fun being on set but anyway by the way i totally forgot to explain that this movie is rated pg and it's an hour and 37 minutes so i'm super interested to hear your take because you love clifford so much did you have certain expectations it sounds like you were very open-minded to whatever they were going to do with a story and a character well, I was open minded. In fact, I had to sort of shut off my critic brain because after you do movie uh, critiques for a while, you, your critic brain starts coming in. You got to turn some pirates off. Uh, for instance, you got this big dog, and then he's like, Oh, I want to keep it. I want to keep it. I'm here. I'm like, Pardon me, what's me to it's like Someone sit this child down and explain that her mom barely affords their own lives taking care of a regular pet we hard enough. How are you going to take care of this super pet? How are you going to physically take care of this super pet? But I said, no, no, no. His movie, based upon a large dog with red fur, put that <laughs> out of your mind. Or even um, at the beginning of the movie, you see Clifford when he's a puppy and he has uh, his yeah. siblings and his mom and the mom gets picked up by the pound and the siblings get picked up by the pound. So part of it's like, but what about Clifford's family? Whatever happened to Clifford's family? Like, no, nope, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Um, and another thing is, I always concerned is what's called potty humor. Is like you got this big dog. At some point in time, it needs to do what it needs to do. And of right. course, there, you know, kids movies love having that sort of joke in there. And it isn't there. Before say it's once, it's done. And I didn't <laughs> want it too much. So yeah. And it's yeah. big. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> How did you think that Clifford looked? Um, I mean, it, at the beginning, he's a, a little puppy and then they've digitized him to look red. And then, of course, now he's gigantic, but he still looked like a puppy. Um, and then like that chasing that you were referring to, there were a few moments where there's some CGI. Overall, what did you think of the look of Clifford? I enjoyed the look very much. In fact, uh, for I'd say like at least 85% of the movie, you can't tell if it's a real puppy that was like digitally inserted or how much it was CGI. Uh, and the funny thing is, there are scenes where you think the CGI will be perfect because he's just standing by himself in a large area. And that's often when it becomes, oh, that's fake. But for the most part, uh, you're so ingrained in the story and the CGI is strong enough, the interaction is strong enough, the... Um, so it's done very, very, very well. And it could be a case that when their production was happening, the global shutdowns happened and they just had to make do with what they can. But yeah, for the most part, the CGI was excellent. The heat, Cliff looks excellent. Interaction looks excellent. Environments looks excellent. And on the hot handful of times it was looking bad, it was brief and gone. <laughs> that is actually really true. Yeah, I thought it was pretty believable. And, and again, you kind of have to suspend your disbelief for the entire story anyway. Um, but overall, like you said, people were interacting, touching and petting them or whatever, and it looked believable. There was only one time where it kind of jolted and it didn't look good. It definitely looked like CGI when yes. the little girl and her uncle at different times were riding him like a horse. And then it kind of looked like a video game or something. But like you said, <laughs> those scenes went by fairly quickly. Overall, I thought uh, they did a good job. Yeah. Was there anything you were disappointed by because you had this vision of Clifford in your since, since your childhood in your mind? Well, there was nothing I was disappointed with Clifford, but there were some creative confusion that I had. For instance, uh, the story is that Emily's mother and uncle were originally from England. The mother has a accent, but the uncle doesn't because he said, well, they came over when he was like two years old, so he didn't grow up with an accent. So I thought it was just a weird thing. And then the mother goes off, I guess, overseas for some business or matter. But I was like, well, you could just send her anywhere in the country. She had to go to, to England. But after the movie, I looked up the actors, and it turns out both the uncle and the mom, they are from London. 
And the mother, uh, I think her name's Serena Gill, I've heard her do American actions in other movies. So it's like, why have one or the other? Why not have them both be uh, from London and just moved to America recently? Like in the uh, home, home Sweet Home Alone, that family yeah. moved into to America like for two months. So like either have them both with accents or do American accents. I don't know. That, that creative choice just seemed strange to yeah me. actually it's a really good point and i really like jack whitehall he plays the uncle kind of the crazy yeah. uncle and what's funny is he's doing an american accent but then occasionally he'll pretend that he's doing a british accent which is his real accent yeah so i thought okay is that just to make us laugh yeah. i don't know but i do like him and by the way have you ever seen him in his uh, netflix tv series called travels with my father have you seen no, that? No, the only thing I the only thing I knowingly seen him in was the recent Jungle Cruise. So um, if I've seen any of us, I wouldn't know it. I've seen him, and I I only sporadically use Netflix. There are too many uh, streaming services for me to keep all these up at the same time. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Well, anyway, yeah, I I agree. Was there anything else that you were like that was odd? Uh, well, well, yes. Um, uh, are we doing spoilers or not? I mean, it's not really a lot to spoil with this kind of movie. I but. know. Let's <laughs> say no. I don't know. What do you say? Okay. I oh, no, no. Okay. okay. Well, I'll say there's a character um, that's very antagonistic and understandably so. And then something at the end made me go, oh, when did this happen? <laughs> <laughs> and also the little boy who clearly likes Emily Elizabeth, that wasn't resolved. So that's something, and I've ha I've been in very similar situations where I've had a crush on a young lady who I didn't <laughs> realize it or wasn't interested in. So I would personally would have liked to have some type of resolution with that story. But it doesn't harm the movie. It's just like, I know where you're coming from, young man. I've been Aww. there. <laughs> I just wish that would have been resolved. But all right. <laughs> He's adorable. Uh, Isaac Wang. He's mm -hmm. so cute. So, so cute. And oh, yeah. my uh, one of my sons married a darling girl from Hong Kong. And now they have a baby boy, my first grandson. And I'm hoping he grows up to look like Isaac Wang because I thought he was so cute. I guess I didn't really... I wasn't looking for a romantic resolution because they're little kids, right. you know, so it's interesting that that's something that jumped out at you. Um, well, I've lived a life. <laughs> I've, I've, I've lived that. I, I, yeah, so that I, and the I girl, the, the girl who plays, you know, the protagonist, the little girl is Darby Camp. And I thought she did a really good job, too. Yeah. Um, you know, they're both very young. And so they've got some acting chops to develop, but they have a bright future. I think both of them, wouldn't you say? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It just would have been nice. Like maybe, maybe like he tries to hold her hand and, or, you know, like, or maybe they do like hold hands for a moment. Goes, <laughs> oh, you know, so that, that just a, a little bit, you know, just to sort of properly close the book, but that's okay. It doesn't really that, really That's so funny. Um, so, and speaking of the cast, we have legendary John Cleese, who's magical and wonderful. Paul Rodriguez. Another British person, by the way. <laughs> right. Yeah. Paul Rodriguez, David Allen Greer. And I grew up with David Allen Greer, you know, and to see him with the gray old man beard, I was just like, oh, we're getting old. <laughs> yes. In fact, uh, the earlier when I was talking about the character that um, that was kind of strange, uh, that was the David Allen Greer character. Um, something happens and it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> but I can't say that without giving away spoilers. So I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, um, in nothing the bad happens, folks. Let me say that. Nothing bad or awful happens in this movie. It's just like, oh, okay. <laughs> That's I turned true. off that critic I mean... brain. Gotta you turned off that critic brain. <laughs> <laughs> Also is Tova Felja. She she's cute. And even Rosie Perez. Now, all kids, young kids are not going to recognize any of those actors. They're just going to look like old adults, you know. But I think well, they might the recognize Keenan Thompson. Yes. I was so <laughs> thrilled that he's in the movie because he actually voiced Hamburger in the Clifford um, Big Red Dog series back in 2003. Mm -hmm. yes. So I, I loved that they did try to include him. And in fact, I wanted to ask you if you had seen any other Easter eggs or any other little things emerge that you remembered seeing from reading the books when you were a little kid or the TV yeah. series. 
Well, yeah, besides Keenan, like I said, there's, there's probably so much happening that is so subtle that I won't notice if someone points it out with someone pointed out like, oh, okay. There's probably some other YouTuber who's like, <laughs> all the secret Easter eggs of the Clifford movie that I'll probably have to dig up. And I go, oh, 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 how, how can I notice that? Yeah, because yeah, it's been years since I've even read the Clifford books to my kids, you know. Um, you, know you know what? It's probably because this movie is such a unique presentation of Clifford that I wasn't trying to look for Easter eggs. I just figured I was just taking it practically as, it's, as it is. Because like I said, yeah. some, usually Clifford, usually Emily Elizabeth has her you know, both parents or a whole family. In fact, usually Emily Elizabeth is referred to as Emily Elizabeth, not just Emily. And that's what True. they do in this movie. They, they just call yeah. her Emily when all other movie always says Emily Elizabeth. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there was a character named Mr. Bridwell and he's actually named after the book series creator, Norman Bridwell. Yeah, so right. I love it when yeah. directors, writers, creators, you know, the whole crew that's putting a film together when it's based on source material, when they do try to give a respectful shout out to something like that, for example, right? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 Said, probably all types of Easter eggs and I just went into <laughs> so, so important about like, oh, <laughs> so you mentioned you mentioned some of the creative choices. Were there any other things you didn't like about the movie? Mm. Uh, no. I, I, other than again, in case of caught, caught off your Prince Rain, is like how are they going to take care of this dog that's just going to get larger and larger and larger? <laughs> you know, you're like, that's what they worry about. That. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, I, I, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think about that till you just said that. Do you think, I mean, as a parent, I, I like that they had to address how are we going to house this dog and feed this dog and take care of this dog because it's, it's just a one mom dog. Just getting by, you know, her child is on scholarship and stuff like She has a good job. It's not like she heard it for money, but at the same time, she ain't exactly rolling in dough. To the point where she probably has to bribe, almost has to bribe, you know, her superintendent to do her, her job and stuff. So it's like now you got not just a mouth to feed, but this giant mouth to feed that's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> even yeah. in the cartoon, even the cartoon, they said like you know, it, uh, Clifford grew so big that they had to move up to the country. So <laughs> you know, uh, uh, Manhattan is not made for giant animals <laughs> <laughs> unless they're in the zoo, which that's yes. a really good zoo out there. Okay, let's dive into tips for parents. What would you want to warn parents about or encourage parents about? Well, <clears throat> only thing to warn parents about, uh, well, one is that there is uh, that, you know, potty joke uh, that is in common in children's movies, but still it is there. Also, it's important to chat with them afterwards that, you know, chat pet care, is very special and very important. So as nice it was that Emily took in the stray, in real life, you shouldn't just take in strays at random. You know, definitely uh, have a chat about what it really means to take care of a yeah. pet. <laughs> and how expensive it can be. It's you know? time, yeah. um, you know, caring, walking, um, you know, medication and just, you know, it's physical presence, you know, it, it's a big responsibility. So yeah, it's, it, this story is nice, but it probably helps to uh, chat with them and say, yes, don't pick up strayed animals <laughs> 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 and don't skip school. Okay. The little um, friend, you know, we skip school and so don't, don't skip school. Stay. That's true. I school. forgot about that. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Well, and my biggest warning for parents is your kids are going to want a pet, if not a dog, any kind of a pet, right? After they watch yeah. this movie. So I like movies that can uh, spawn conversations between parents and their kids. So heads up, warning for the parents, be prepared to have a conversation about the responsibility of pet ownership, right? Yes. <laughs> there is some issue of bullying. So that's always oh, yes. worth a conversation with your kids yeah. if you're watching this with them. Do you think that parents will enjoy this movie as much as their, as their kids? Or what do you think? Well, if they're long time fans of Clifford like I am, they'll probably enjoy it a lot. If they are looking for something to 
entertain their children for an hour and a half that won't make them want to rip their heads out. At this. Yes. You know, I don't think there's going to be under their top 10 list, but it's not going to be one of those movies where the adults are just like dreading every second while their child is just it's like yeah, having a ball, having a blast. <laughs> yeah, it's mostly harmless fun, right? However, yeah. I've got a question, and that is this Emily is told if she really loves this dog, it will grow, mm-hmm. right? And yeah. so do you think that there are going to be awkward conversations where kids are like, I love the, our dog. Why isn't he growing? You know, like well, that's I mean, all part of that conversation. That's all that's all part of the of fantasy versus reality. The you know responsibly That's taking true. a pair of pets, responsibly of not picking up random stray animals, <laughs> or you know uh, staying in school. So yeah, but but there's nothing dangerous about the movie, but it is important afterwards. Probably have a nice little conversation. It's okay, okay, young man, or hey, young ladies, if you see an animal on the street, just let it be. That was a movie. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is real life. <laughs> So in my movie reviews, you know how I always like to point out the themes. What would you say is are the big themes of this movie? Takeaway lessons. Well, family is certainly one of the top things. Yeah. Loyalty, but also standing up for yourself. Uh, standing up when you feel pressure, when you feel bullied, when you feel small, that understand you are important, you are loved, and others will love you. And you can be unique and weird or strange, but there are people who will care for you and like you, even though you are different physically or emotionally. Uh, That's something important. You can be loved and accepted for who you are, whether you're a little girl, shy girl, or a little boy that has a crush on another girl, or a giant red dog. (laughs) Exactly. Very well said. I was just looking down my list of everything and Actually, you kind of nailed it. Um, (laughs) Using your voice, standing up for yourself, certainly the big ones. And then are there any funny lines or interesting lines that stood out to you? Uh, Well, yes. Um, When they did the potty joke and he said, uh, I don't want to be around for number two. (laughs) Yes. Okay, so one of the funny lines was when uh, the uncle, played by Jack Whitehall, crazy things are happening and he says, this is the craziest thing that I've seen. And I've been to Burning Man. (laughs) And I don't know, uh, Burning Man is here in the state of Nevada, where I currently live in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. Do you guys out in New York know about Burning Man? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's that's the joke for the grown-ups. That's that's one of those little groups. I am aware of Burning Man. I've never been, but I am aware of it. (laughs) I, I have one of our dearest friends goes every year that they have it, you know, with COVID, they didn't have it, but you know, I'm like, Oh, I want to go, but I only want to go for one day and you have to buy a week long pass and take massive amounts of camping gear. And, and he does, he sets up this massive camp. And anyway, I'm like, I don't want to go and sit in the hot desert for a whole week, you know, (laughs) plus I don't have time. But anyway, that line made me laugh and I knew it would just go over the heads of the kids. Um, But here's a a line that Emily played by Darby Camp says, she says, if we can love each other like this, none of us has to feel small and alone, which is that theme that you had just mentioned. Um, Okay, so what would be your overall movie review mom grade for this movie? My overall grade would be B plus. I enjoyed it very much. I uh, enjoyed seeing it in the theater. I enjoyed seeing it at home. I find it funny that my two favorite movies of the year so far involve animated puppies, both provided by Paramount, the other being the Paw Patrol film. But yes, uh, this is really great. And again, as long as I keep my critic brain off, you know, it uh, it's very, very enjoyable. So yeah. Yeah, well, good. I think I gave it a B. Um, You know, some of the dialogue is pretty lame. It's pretty predictable in some regards. It's not the greatest movie I've ever seen. But for the target audience, it's uh, harmless fun. And, you know, and and it had some really cute moments, I think. So as a film critic, what do you look for when you do put your critic brain on? Well, first and foremost, if it is, if I'm going to the theater, is it worth my time? Is it worth my effort? Is it worth my money? Because yeah. it takes a lot for that to get uh, to the theater, especially now that I'm getting older. I'm much older than I look. 
Uh, yeah, so do I feel like my time is wasted? So that's one thing. Uh, I'm looking for a solid story. That would be great story. It has to be a solid story. I, I have to, see, if I see it in the trailer, I want to see it in the film. So if something happens in the movie that, that or vice versa, yes. it always bring me down. Um, and do I feel uplifted by the end? I don't necessarily like, oh yeah, wonderful, but like, okay, that was worth my time. That was worth my, effort. that's the top priorities. Now after that, I want to know how the story is. I want to know how the acting is. I want to know the direction. I want to make sure things make sense. And I want to make sure people don't do things that are stupid. It's just really <laughs> hard to do when you're watching horror films. But yes, when characters do things that are really dumb, yes. just for the plot happen, that uh, or plot <laughs> twists that come out of completely nowhere for this plot twist for the sake of plot twists. Uh. <laughs> so, yeah. What would you say is your favorite movie all of all time? People ask me that because I'm a film critic and I can't answer because I love so many movies. I can tell you what some of the top 10 are, mm. but I want to hear what your answer is to that question because you probably hear it also, right? Well, my favorite movie is the Back to the Future trilogy. And I say oh. Back to the Future trilogy because it is one continuous story. It yeah. starts up and then it continues immediately after and then continues immediately after. It's just one big epic story. So that's why I say the Back to the Future trilogy changed my life in multiple ways. Uh, really? For discussing Back to the Future saga. So yeah. Wow. So my favorite trilogy of all time has to be Lord of the Rings. And one of my sons just binge watched the whole extended cut version with his Ooh. girlfriend this week. I know she had never seen it. She's from Cuba. And so we're constantly making references to the movie. We're like, you have to see this. Anyway, she, this was the highest compliment. Her favorite movie is Twilight the twilight series and so after she finished lord of the Rings, she was like i think i like this better and i'm like yes of course you like this better because this is amazing <laughs> do you have an all-time worst movie oh wow <laughs> yes um and it's not the worst movie i've ever seen but it's my all-time worst movie uh jurassic world fallen kingdom Oh, I, I hated this movie. I, I used, I was always working at Universal, I used to work at Universal also as well, Walt Disney World. And a few days before Dress World came out, some of the um, Universal folks were allowed to have uh, special tickets. I didn't get a ticket, my, my best friend, she was able to get a ticket, so we went together. So I've nice. seen this movie early, I'm seeing this movie for free. I'm seeing this at an exclusive event. I hated <laughs> by, by like the 10 minute mark i hated and there's so many questions that are going into the movie that were not answered I, and it was so bad that when the credits started i figured there'd be some type of after credit thing but it's usually an after credit thing no i wanted to run out of the theater the only reason why i did not run out of the theater because it was packed so i had to wait for people to leave but if i could have run out of the theater <laughs> i would have i Oh my goodness, I wanted to leave movies. I wanted to get rid of them. I wanted to forget movies, but I've never wanted to run out of the theater because that movie was so awful. That's so funny. I didn't have that kind of a reaction, but one movie that I literally was in the theater and I turned to my husband and I said, I hate this movie was, <laughs> do you remember the movie Noah that came out? I, I've never saw, I, I, I know of it, but I've never seen it. Oh, you it. never saw it? Yeah, I wait, wait a minute. Oh, is, that been, one, is that the one with Russell Crowe? Yes. And okay, I that is, yeah. I, I, I it could movie. have, and it had Emma Watson and yeah. a bunch of other people, but it could have been epic and it was it just went off the rails so bad. And so I said I, I refuse to believe he got all that muscle from eating plants all day. <laughs> That's very, I'm sure there are plenty of vegetarians now that can have some type of meal plan to get all those muscles, but we had all those muscles and all that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And so because this is a children's movie, uh, parents might want to know what our recommendations would be. And so at the end of my reviews, I always give recommendations for movies that I think are sort of similar that I think they'd also like. So if somebody likes Clifford, what other children's family friendly films would you recommend that you think that they would also like that are sort of similar or just equally enjoyable? 
Well, if they have somehow have not seen the Paw Patrol movie yet, see that movie because it's probably going to be my favorite movie of the year. <laughs> um, there's also Spirit Untamed, I believe it is, you know, with the yeah. young lady and the uh, horse. The horse. Yeah, I did see um, that. That was very sweet. If they want to have something in a movie, uh, was it the far, the home away? What's that one about, you know, the dog and the cat and everything? The, the yes. Homeward Bound. Homeward, homeward bound. bound. Homeward Bound, yeah. 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 And uh, it's not so much for parents, but for the little, little children, the uh, buddies with the Air Bud slash Air Buddies oh, yeah, franchise. Yeah. yeah. Put the little toddlers down, they'll go nuts for <laughs> Those are good ones. So I was kind of thinking of other movies that are kind of had the CGI animals mixed with the humans. So the two that I wanted to recommend are Peter Rabbit, both of them, you know, the newer ones that just came out um, where they mix humans with the animation. Super cute. I think the animation's adorable. And then another one that's fairly older is Paddington. But I hear that they're working on another one of Paddington. And those both are, you know, old stories that you might have grown up with now kind of live action slash CGI. Mm -hmm. Yeah, excellent choices. (laughs) Well, thank you. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you, my friend. Thank you so much for doing this with me. (laughs) You are the perfect person to review this movie because you're such a Clifford the Big Red Dog fan anyway. (laughs) Well, so good luck with your channel and I will. Catch you next time. Bye for now. (laughs) Bye-bye.